Sup y'all it's me it's yo boy fanfic audiobooks enjoy the story and don't forget to like and subscribe for more content. Also comment what you want to see next in the channel, let's start. Rukia had gone mad. It was the only adequate explanation for her current circumstances. The stress of her recent injury, along with the extra paperwork that had built up over even a day's absence, and the fact that she'd spent much of the day debating what to say to Ichigo, had combined to cause hallucinations. That, or he really had stormed into her office looking blotchy and agitated and practically molested her. Madness was also the only understandable reason why she'd stopped him. Wait, she said softly, reaching out to touch his back. Ichigo. The fabric of his uniform was smooth against her hand. She imagined she could feel his heartbeat beneath it. It was a long moment before he turned around. She leaned her head against his chest, letting her hair fall in front of her face. You're hopeless idiot, she said. You don't just grab a person like that. It's rude. Rukia. His hands rested lightly on her back, as if he thought she'd twist away if he held too tight. I didn't say you could talk, she said. She looked up and her breath caught. He was so close. He had a tiny smudge of ink beside his nose, she noted absently. You should have better manners than that after all this time. Never bothered with M. A ghost of a smile turned his lips and he drew her closer. Idiot. You're so stupid. Something between a scoff and a laugh emerged from her throat and then her arms were around his neck and they were kissing, really kissing this time. She could feel his skin and taste his mouth when his tongue slipped past her lips and she couldn't let go, wouldn't, because if she stopped then this might not be real. Ichigo made a noise in the back of his throat. She'd forgotten he did that. She'd forgotten how much it made her want to devour him. It had been over forty years. How had she made it forty days? Um, Rukia. Ichigo attempted to speak between kisses, but she didn't give a damn about words just now. Forty years. How stupid had they both been? Rukia, hold on. Shut up, she muttered, and bit him on the chin. I said no talking. Damn, he breathed, and kissed her again. Lips and tongues and teeth all got involved and there was no gentleness to this one, none, but she didn't care. Rukia. Ichigo lifted her onto her toes to whisper in her ear. Where's Yukitake? She jumped back, startled, for a moment, Ichigo still held his arms out in a parody of an embrace. She licked her lips nervously and he dropped them, eyes locked on her. Sorry, he said. I didn't think about him after, well. She glanced over her shoulder at the door that connected their offices. Nothing. If he'd heard them, Captain Yukatake had chosen to be discreet. I know. Should I, ah, uh, come back later? She opened her mouth to say yes. Come back later and they could talk. Give them both time to calm down. No. Ichigo's face dropped. Oh? Okay. I'll just. He waved his hand in a vague gesture, but she caught it in hers. Don't come back later, she said. Come now. Ichigo had gone mad. The thought kept running through his mind as he and Rukia walked quickly through the halls of her division. The two of them rushing to her quarters so they could be alone, her presence just touching his side, he still half expected that all this would turn out to be a fantasy or a fever dream. Only iron control and other people's walking through said halls kept him from touching her, she'd kill him for getting grabby in public. But if this was madness, it was the best kind and it was everything he'd wanted and way more than he'd expected. And did he even remember how to do it? Stupid question. It had to be something you never forgot. Like riding a bike, really, and damn he didn't need to be thinking about riding until they were properly alone, which needed to be really soon. He just hoped his riding skills hadn't rusted. Where the fuck do you live? He hissed under his breath. You don't know. She glanced sideways at him. No. You never showed me. 
An oversight on my part, clearly. Here. He nearly went right past her, as she rounded a corner and stopped dead. Here. If he'd been in a normal state of mind, Ichigo might have been embarrassed at the way he practically fell on her the moment they entered her quarters. Rukia didn't seem to mind, though, reaching out blindly to slam the door shut before wrapping her arms around his neck. This was more like it. Ichigo would have sighed happily if his mouth wasn't plastered to Rukia's. The room was dark and quiet aside from them, all indications of passing time gone, and he wasn't sure if they spent a minute or an hour like that. Just getting to touch her again like this was almost a form of release, but not quite, not yet, and he really wanted to get to that. With great reluctance, he reached behind his neck to pull her hands away. Rukia made a noise of annoyance and he pulled away far enough to get his hands between them. Ichigo. Shut up. He leaned in to kiss her below her jaw, moving his mouth down, as he pulled her robes open to give him access to her skin. Let me. He dropped to his knees and began working at the knot of her sash. For once, she listened to him and let him work, though she didn't stop touching. He frowned in concentration as he picked at the knot, it had figured she had tied it tightly and perfectly. Rukia's fingers traced his face as he worked, ghosting over his eyebrows, his cheeks. A thumb trailed over his mouth and he paused to bite it gently, pulling the tip into his mouth to suck on it before continuing. Finally, finally, the knot came free. He looked up as he pulled her robes open, exposing her chest. She smiled above him before shrugging them off her shoulders to let them fall around her waist. Rukia would have giggled if she didn't think it would spoil the moment. Ichigo was trying very hard to make this good, she was sure, but he was also staring at her breasts like he hadn't seen any in a very long time. Well, perhaps he hadn't. Still, if they were in a different set of circumstances, she might have teased him to wipe up his drool. As it was, she was more eager for him to stop looking and start doing. Stand up already, she told him, and he quickly complied. Whatever or her unclothed chest had inspired, it didn't impede his actions. A tiny thrill twisted inside her as Ichigo leaned over to nibble at her shoulder, then paused when she moved her arms. What are you doing? Multitasking, she murmured, and set to work on the knots of his sash. He wasn't the only one desperate to get rid of clothing. He also wasn't the only one who needed to see and touch bared skin. She traced the scars on Ichigo's chest with her fingers, following with her tongue. Ichigo let out a strangled groan and, before she could react, bent to scoop her up in his arms, pressing her against the wall. You're such a bitch, he mumbled into her neck between bites. Rukia chose to answer by socking him in the arm and wrapping her legs around his waist. It wasn't that his arms weren't strong enough to support her, this was just more fun. Ichigo, she panted. Take off your pants. Hum? I can't do it for you, Morin. Just, she squeezed her legs around him once. Just hurry up and do it. He couldn't have dropped her to her feet and yanked the ties of his hakama free any faster if he'd used flash steps. Not one to waste time given to her, she did the same, kicking her hakama aside as it hit the floor. Ichigo stepped to embrace her once more, this time with nothing between them. Rukia. His eyes were shining. Shish. She kissed him softly as he lifted her in his arms again. Don't say anything. When Ichigo came back to reality, he was collapsed on top of her, both of them breathing heavily. She stroked his back, and neither of them spoke for several minutes. Ichigo, she muttered at last. You're crushing me. He bit back a caustic comment and rolled them over so that she was on top, her head resting against his chest. Better? Yes, she said, breath tickling his skin. Much? They lay together in silence. Ichigo would have been content to stay like that forever if one thing wasn't bothering him. Rukia. Um? She already sounded half asleep. Well. Spit it out, Ichigo. 
Why did we wait so long? There was a long pause. Rukia. Since when did you start feeling chatty after sex? She grumbled. Hey, if I'm interrupting your beauty sleep. She cut him off by placing her hand over his mouth. You're not, she said quietly, and swiped her thumb across the skin beside his nose. What was that? Oh, she said, just a bit of ink. What? He touched his face. This whole time. And you just now told me. I was distracted. She was smiling, so instead of teasing her or starting an argument, he wrapped his arms tighter around her and ran his fingers up and down the skin of her back. He couldn't seem to stop touching her. Ichigo. Her voice was soft in the quiet room, as if she weren't even certain she wanted him to hear her. Yeah? She sat up on an elbow to face him better, though he refused to relinquish his hold on her waist. Her eyes looked serious. What do we do now? He hesitated. He wasn't certain what kind of answer he could give, or what she expected. He settled for pulling her closer and kissing her. That's not an answer, she pointed out when their lips parted. Now who's chatty? Before she could answer, he rolled them over so he was pressing her down onto the futon. We'll figure this out, Rukia, but can we just, can we enjoy the moment first? He leaned down to kiss her neck. We've got a lot of years to make up for. She ran a hand through his hair. I suppose that is acceptable. Good. He grinned against her skin and proceeded to make sure. They had no need for words. Chapter 11 on rude awakenings, deciding one's place and taking the next step. The sharp knocks on the door were enough to snap Ichigo awake, but it took him a few disoriented seconds to remember where he was. It wasn't until Rukia stirred in his arms, making the soft breathy sounds of someone still deeply asleep, that he remembered and smiled. He debated the wisdom of kissing her good morning. On one hand, well, he really wanted to. On the other, they'd been awake and tiring themselves out for much of the night. She might not appreciate being woken out of a sound sleep. On yet another hand, physical impossibilities aside, whoever was at the door was still knocking. If he didn't want her to wake up, he'd have to take care of it. He sat up, easing Rukia off him, and his eyes fell upon the closet where she'd kept the futon. A pile of neatly stacked furoshiki cloths sat on a shelf. Perfect. Moving quickly but quietly, he snatched one of the large clods from the shelf and wrapped it around his waist. Whoever was at the door knocked a third time, and as he came closer, he could hear a hissed argument on the other side. Told you she's obviously not here, so let's just go. Shut up. Give her a chance to answer, not everyone else hops around like a hyper monkey. Ichigo slid the door open to see Sentaro and Kiyone on the other side. Can I help you? Kiyone just blinked while Sentaro's jaw dropped. We, we just wanted to see if Rukia-san would like to join us for breakfast, Kiyone stammered. We wanted to treat her since she was hurt on duty. Oh? Ichigo glanced behind him. Rukia was still dead to the world. Well, she's kinder busy. Kiyone burst out, nodding eagerly. Yes, very busy. That's our vice-captain, always getting a jump on the day. Please don't bother to tell her we were here, we'll just see her, later, much later. She's still recovering and don't worry, we'll explain to Captain Yukatek. Ichigo wasn't sure he liked the sound of them explaining anything to Rukia's captain. Hey, you don't have to. It's no trouble at all. She yanked the sleeve of her gaping partner, who hadn't moved an inch. Come on, ape, they want to be alone. But? Now? In a flurry of flailing limbs and barked insults, they were gone. Ichigo sighed. Rukia was not going to be thrilled about this. He probably should have just let them wander off on their own. At least Rukia hadn't woken up. She'd rolled over onto her side in his absence, facing away from him. That was okay with him. 
He slid under the top comforter and wrapped an arm around her waist, holding her back against his chest and spooning himself around her body. He dropped back to sleep, relaxed and content. Interruptions aside, this was a good morning. When she found herself drifting awake, Rukia squeezed her eyes shut tighter and attempted to burrow under the covers. She snapped to alertness when an arm whose presence she hadn't even noticed tightened around her, and she felt lips press against her shoulder. Morning, Ichigo murmured. She twisted around onto her back so she could see him, leaning on one elbow above her. Morning, she echoed, and closed her eyes for a moment when he kissed her. When he pulled back, she tugged at the blanket to allow her more modesty. Amusement sparkled in Ichigo's eyes. You know, I have seen it before, he pointed out. A lot. I don't tell you how to act, she grumbled. You could stand to be more modest too, walking around with your sword released all the time. He rolled his eyes. I'll keep that in mind, he said. When I'm a captain. Oh? She sat up so sharply their faces nearly collided. Hey, watch it. My nose is still sore from where you bashed it in yesterday. What time is it? She fumbled to get out from under the covers. Oh no, it must be late. I've got to get dressed. Hey, wait. He grasped her wrist. Don't just run off. We should talk. You should have woken me earlier, she said. I do have responsibilities to take care of. And I'm sure you have somewhere to be as well. Despite her words, though, she couldn't bring herself to pull her wrist away. As much as she needed to leave, she was too warm and comfortable here with Ichigo. Just Kidu practice first thing, he said. I'm not meeting Hinamori and Hisagi until later. And they probably already know you're going to be late, because those two loons from your division already stopped by. Rukia stiffened. Sentaro and Kione were here. Eh? Ichigo smiled weakly. Sorry. I should have just let them knock, I know, but you look so peaceful, I didn't want it to wake you. I chased M off. She flushed. I wish you had not done that. They didn't see anything, he protested. What, is it so important to have breakfast with a couple people you see every day? Or do you just not want anyone to know you slept with me? No. That is, no, I'm not trying to hide anything. She grasped his hands. In hers. I don't regret this. I simply have no desire to expose our private business to scrutiny. I don't want that either. He looked relieved. Good. We are in agreement, then, she said and felt a little stupid at how businesslike she sounded. Forcing herself to relax, she leaned back into the sheets. I suppose being a little later to the office than I already am won't make much of a difference. He curled up beside her. I like the way you're thinking now. She settled in and touched his relaxed face lightly. It was a contrast to how tense he'd looked when he'd barreled into her office. What happened yesterday? she asked. What brought this on? How much do you remember of the night the hollow got you? he asked. Oh? That? Very little, she said carefully. I remember the hollow, and falling. After that, just a haze. I think I remember talking. She flushed, still uncertain she wanted to remember what she had talked about. Yeah, there was talking. He chuckled. You said you missed me. That's all. Oh hell no, he said, looking far more amused than she felt was warranted. You also complimented my ass. I did not, she protested. You're making that up. I swear, Rukia, it's the truth. It's not my fault it left an impression on you. He probably was, she realized. He was grinning far too much to be telling tales. That's all it took, she asked. You were inspired by me ogling you under medication. It didn't hurt. She smacked his arm. Pig. That wasn't all, he said, 
catching her hand in his and rubbing the back of it with his thumb. You said that you tried to forget me. Forget us. But you weren't very good at it. She looked away. That much was true. Anything else? Just some babbling, he said. Nothing important. It was enough. Oh? I just got sick of it, he said, and now he looked serious and held her hand tightly. You could have punched me in the face, but I was tired of pretending that I was fine, that I wasn't feeling things I wasn't supposed to. I was just lying to myself. I was lying to you. She swallowed heavily over the lump in her throat. And now? He spread his hands. I'm not lying anymore, he said. I guess now we just decide where we want to go from here. Where we go from here, she repeated quietly. Before last night, I didn't let myself think about being with you like this again. Even if I wanted to. She touched his face. I thought it wouldn't be fair to you. I didn't think you thought about me this way anymore, either. Like I said, I was lying to myself, he said. I'm sick of that. It doesn't do either of us any good. I just want to be with you now. Like it was before. She smiled faintly. It's more complicated than that, she said. I don't want things to be just like they were before. It's not like it ended well between us. I hurt you. I don't want to hurt you again. His expression softened. Dumbass, he said. I'm not worried about that. Things are different now. They are different, she agreed, resting her fingers on his. For both of us. You lived, Ichigo. Don't tell me you didn't change, too, in all that time. We both did. We can't just pretend neither of us are different. I know I can't, he said. Doesn't change the way I feel, though. A rush of warmth ran through her body. What happened between us last night was wonderful, she said. But it doesn't automatically fix everything between us. There are things to consider, to discuss. I just don't want us to get ahead of ourselves and have it go badly because we rushed into things. I wouldn't call waiting a few decades rushing into things, he said, sounding both annoyed and affectionate. I wouldn't either. She smiled. But I want to get things right this time. It's worth it to take our time. She leaned over and kissed him deeply. He held the kiss for a long time before pulling away. So. I really do need to get to work now. She grimaced. I don't want to imagine what those idiots are telling Captain Yukatake. I'd like to cut them off if I can. Yeah, sorry about that. She pinched his side. You should be. Bitch. He made a face. It didn't take long for them to get up and dress again, much as neither wanted to leave. They paused beside her door before leaving. I'll just see you later, then, Ichigo said. She nodded. Of course. Good. He hesitated, then kissed her quickly. Later, Rukia. Goodbye, she said, and watched him leave. Funny, she thought. It was the first time in a long while that saying those words didn't feel like an ending. Ichigo left Rukia's quarters uncertain how he felt about the situation. So, he'd had sex with her. Several times, in fact, he wasn't sure of the exact number, as they'd seemed to meld into each other, as the night grew deeper, and the two of them grew more tired. And while the sex was good, it was the meaning behind it that counted. It wasn't just a physical thing. It meant something. But then, he didn't. Quite know where to go from here. He didn't have a problem with taking their time now that they had time, but all his instincts were telling him to move forward. The tip of his tongue slipped out to brush where their lips had touched before he caught himself. Trying not to cringe at his own pathetic resemblance to a lovesick teenager, he stomped off to the headquarters of his division. At least he knew where to go from here in the literal sense. Hinamori was sorting through reports at her desk when he arrived. 
Yo, he greeted her. What are you doing here? she asked, looking up with a confused expression. He blinked. Should I be somewhere else? Yes, actually, she said. The sixth division, about twenty minutes ago. What? He stared. No, I'm not. I have another day or so before that visit. She shook her head. It's today. Shit, he swore. Going from one Kuchiki's bed to the other one's office was not part of his plan for a good day. Shit. Hinamori raised an eyebrow. You're only a bit late. You can still go. Can I just say I was sick? Captain Kuchiki is not your superior, so of course you could, she said, grinning. Though as your vice-captain, I'd would be interested in knowing what kind of illness you've come down with. It could be contagious. He turned around. I'm going. It was a quick trip to the 6th Division, something that didn't exactly please Ichigo. The door to Bayakuya's office was open when he arrived, but he still knocked against the doorframe. There was just something about he man that made a guy not want to barge into his space. Bayakuya didn't even look up from his paperwork. Enter. Hey, Ichigo said uneasily. I know I'm late. Yes. The single word was delivered in a clipped tone. So, you still got me penciled into your appointment book, or do we need to reschedule? After a long pause, Bayakuya set his inkbrush carefully to the side of his papers and directed his gaze at Ichigo. It was as cold and penetrating as he remembered, and Ichigo fought the urge to glare back out of reflex. He thought he could detect a hint of displeasure in the other man's eyes and wondered if Bayakuya could somehow tell what had happened the night before. Could Rukia's Reiatsu have rubbed off on him somehow? That is entirely up to you, Bayakuya said at last. You are here to observe and learn, if you so choose. I am not your teacher. Really? Ichigo shifted on his feet. I got the impression you'd have plenty to say. Bayakuya lifted a shoulder in a way that on a less noble person would have been a shrug. The decision has already been made. You will be a captain, one of my, he paused, peers, and as such you may take away as much, or as little from the experience as you like. There was another pause as Ichigo struggled to decipher whether he was subtly telling him to get the hell out or not. Probably not, he decided. Peer or not, Bayakuya had never had any qualms about being a rude asshole in the past. I'll stay. Bayakuya turned back to his paperwork. Fine. Ichigo waited for him to finish up whatever he was working on and set it aside so they could get down to business. He didn't. After five more minutes of waiting, it became apparent that Bayakuya had meant observe quite literally, as he apparently had no intention of explaining what or why he was doing. So, do you normally have this much paperwork in the morning? I have this much paperwork all the time, he remarked. As will you. I find it's best to take care of it as soon as possible instead of avoiding the responsibility. Aha. Uh -huh. Ichigo shuffled over and peered at the reports from the side of the desk. Bayakuya paused for a moment, as if to protest, then continued. Anything interesting here? To you, likely not. So, nothing really helpful for your future peer. He turned another page. No. Ichigo scowled and shut up. There were a few things he'd like to say, but he could just tell Bayakuya was relishing the chance to shut him down with that nobler-than-thou tone of utter calm. He did feel dumb just standing there, though, so he was just a little glad to see Bayakuya put his brush down a few minutes later and stand calm. He hadn't been to all thirteen divisions yet, but strolling around with Bayakuya on his morning rounds, Ichigo thought that 6th must be the most rigidly organized division of them all. Hell, stroll wasn't even the right word. It was far too loose. Kuchiki Bayakuya moved forward with purpose, though he never appeared to hurry. Wherever they went, squads were busy with drills. He wasn't sure if they felt their captain's Reiatsu approaching, 
or getting a by a courier-sized stick-up ones, as was the first thing that happened upon joining the division. And Rinji had been vice-captain here. It was probably a good thing the war had cut his tenure short and prompted immediate promotion. Ichigo couldn't imagine him being so stiff. Plus he was getting bored. He'd been interested in seeing just what a captain did all day when he'd first arrived and barely knew what he was doing, but this wasn't anything he couldn't see in his own division. He didn't expect it when Bayakuya stopped on a pathway that overlooked his current vice-captain running a training session on the parade ground. Do you have questions? Ichigo leaned back to take in the view. Looks like you run a pretty tight ship here. Bayakuya nodded at him, which was probably the closest thing he'd get to a thank you. I think. He hesitated for a moment before storming ahead. I think there's no damn reason for me to be here. Bayakuya merely raised an eyebrow. Really? Yeah, really. Hell, you don't want me here either, do you? Bayakuya's face didn't even twitch. Well, whatever. What's the point of this? By now I'm either ready or I'm not. You voted me in, you should know. Bayakuya made a noncommittal noise. What? You don't agree? Prodding Kuchiki Bayakuya probably wasn't the wisest thing he could have done, but Ichigo was annoyed enough that he didn't really care. As you say, you will shortly be captain, Bayakuya said. How you choose to educate yourself in preparation for such a responsibility is at your own discretion. I am merely doing as Captain Yamamoto asked by availing my division's procedures and grounds to you. Decide for yourself what to do next. I will, he said. I have. I'm done. I'm ready. As you say. I'm going. He turned to leave. I'll let Yamamoto know myself. Time to get things started. Bayakuya waved a hand dismissively. Good. So, bye. Um. Bayakuya was probably just happy to get him out of his hair, but Ichigo didn't care. Hell, they were peers now, right? Forget the snob. Yeah. He could handle this. He was ready. Still, as he turned to go, he couldn't help thinking he saw a hint of amusement in Bayakuya's eyes. Chapter 12, On Moving Up in the World, Throwing a Shindig, and an Ending That Isn't The thing about becoming a captain was that no one warned you about anything. They just thought you could take whatever came along. Honor, prestige and a crisp white hari were all well and good, but the massive, migraine-inducing pile of paperwork that came with them left a lot to be desired. He'd anticipated lots of work once the position was officially his. It was just that no one had told him that the workload would spike to such high levels before the official ceremony that would make him captain of the 5th Division. Congratulations, Hinamori had said, eyes sparkling. Now just fill out these 200 forms in triplicate, and the office is yours. So she hadn't said it quite like that. It had been close enough that Ichigo found himself dashing over to the 13th, on his lunch break instead of walking just so he could hope for enough time to see Rukia. Everything had been so crazy for the last couple of days. Since he'd decided he was ready for the captaincy that they hadn't even had a chance to talk again, just shared brief looks in passing. Yukatek was just entering the main office when Ichigo trotted up. Good afternoon, Ichigo-kun, he said with a pleasant smile. Can I help you with something? I was actually looking for Rukia, he said after a moment's hesitation, wondering how much you could take new. Sentaro and Kiyone had big mouths, but they wouldn't really have said exactly what they saw, right? Rukia hadn't come to kill him yet to avenge her embarrassment, so probably not. Ah? Uh, unfortunately, she's out doing some field training with the squad all afternoon, you could take said. Can I pass along a message? Ah, no thanks. I was just stopping by to see how she was. Fully recovered, Yukatek assured him. I meant to come thank you for looking out for her when she was injured. No big deal. 
Ichigo shrugged. I was there. Of course I stayed when she needed me. I don't doubt that. As Rukia's captain, I've always been glad she could rely on you, he said. Personally as well as professionally. I care about her a great deal. I know she likes you a lot too. Yukitake nodded. I want to see her happy. His gaze bored into Ichigo. I hope it's not intrusive to say I was sorry when the two of you separated years ago. I know you made her happy. I tried, Ichigo said, his face burning up. He was grateful when Yukitake looked away. Still, I'm sure you understand why she remained here in Seoul society, he said. She's come so far over the years. She's blossomed. He looked back at Ichigo. And now here you are. Strange, how these things come in cycles. Ah, yeah, Ichigo hedged, trying to figure out what the older captain was getting at. Was this a way of giving his blessing? A veiled threat that he'd better make Rukia happy again. I never thought of it like that, but I guess it's true. Listen to me. Yukitake shook his head. Sometimes I sound like the old man I am. I'm glad you're joining us as a captain, Ichigo. And as a friend. Please come by any time you like. And not just to see Rukia. Thanks. Ichigo nodded. I will. Yukitake smiled. And I'll tell Rukia you were here. There wasn't much else to do, but return to his own office. That was fast, Hinamori said as he entered. I'm just efficient. Good to know, Hisagi replied from beside his vice-captain. For the first time while in the office with them, he wasn't wearing his white captain's hari. He bowed to Ichigo in an exaggerated manner, his grin lessening the seriousness of the gesture. I just dropped off the last paperwork from my end. It's all yours now. I'll do my best, Ichigo said solemnly. They shook hands. I'm taking off, Hisagi announced. You might have a party tomorrow, but Akaku and Rinji are taking me out for mine early. Want to come? Thanks, but I think I'll stay here, he said. Try to get a handle on things so I'm not behind my first real day. You'll be fine. Go easy on him, Hinamori. He winked. Not too easy, though. Well, Captain, she said when Hisagi was gone, what comes first? He opened his mouth to say he wasn't a captain yet, then closed it slowly. It wasn't as if the ceremony meant as much as the actual work. Whatever needs to come first. The squads have their assignments for today, so let me guess, more paperwork. You've already got the hang of it. She tilted her head and smiled. I guess so. He grinned and snagged her arm, guiding her towards the door. I haven't had lunch yet, and it's getting late for that, he said. Plus I'm not official until tomorrow, so no need to act official until then. Sir? Come on, vice-captain, he said. We're going to get lunch, and I'm going to buy you a drink. The paperwork will still be here when we get back. Yes, sir. As an officer of the Gote 13, Rukia was expected to attend the ceremonial induction of a new captain and listen to the speeches and symbolic acts with all the solemnity required by the occasion. She was capable of this. It was just that she had to try so hard to keep from giggling throughout the entire thing. She'd been fine until Yamamoto was halfway through his first address when she'd glanced at Ichigo. He'd grown better at hiding his emotions over the years, and she'd gotten out of practice at reading them. But it was obvious in a heartbeat that he was already bored out of his mind. A veteran of such ceremonies, Rukia bit back a grin. Ichigo was in for a long wait. He might not be one for pomp and circumstances, but soul society absolutely was, and that hadn't changed no matter how many other things had since Aizen's war. After a while, when Captain Kairaku began his boisterous welcome speech, as one of the senior captains, and the atmosphere had relaxed a bit, she saw Ichigo looking through the crowd and caught his eye. 
She flashed him a small grin before resuming her serious expression, and a ghost of an answering smile appeared on Ichigo's face. They kept eye contact for the rest of Kairaku's speech, and Rukia could practically feel him trying to communicate with her. It had been a good idea to take some time to think about what they were doing. She understood why they hadn't had a chance to see each other for more than a minute, but she still wished she could drag him out of the gathering hall right then for a more private celebration. Soon, she reminded herself. It was his day. He should get the chance to enjoy it. They'd have plenty of time to figure things out together afterwards. She couldn't hold back a proud smile when Commander General Yamamoto unfolded the white hari and placed it over Ichigo's shoulders. He seemed to grasp the importance of this particular moment. Ichigo bowed his head as he slid the mark of rank and achievement on, and there was pride in his face when he lifted it again and looked directly at her. The roar of the approving crowd broke her reverie as the applause rose. With the ceremony over, the assembled group rose to its feet, with the representatives from 11th Division charging to be the first to congratulate the new captain. Rukia let them and hung back. It was time for a party. Their time would come. It didn't look like it would come for a while, though. As the crowd moved to the 5th Division grounds where plenty of food and drink was already laid out, the party really got started. Rukia sipped a drink and watched from the edge of the crowd. For once, Ichigo was the life of the party. The only reason she could tell where he was in the mass of people was the orange hair that stood out like a beacon and the force of his reiatsu that she could feel shimmering around him. He looks good, doesn't he? A proud voice came from her right, and she looked over to see Kurosaki Ishin clutching a beer. Kurosaki-san. I didn't realize you would be here. It's Ishin, Rukia-chan, Ishin. I keep telling you. He chuckled. I couldn't miss this. Besides, now that they've gotten my stupid son to be a captain, there's no worry they'll come begging for. Me to take back my old job. You should come back more often, she said. Captain Yukatake always enjoys your visits. Just him. Ishin raised an eyebrow. I still owe you a game of shogi, don't I? After the way you demolished me last time. He pouted. I still think you had an unfair advantage. I'll never go drinking with Shunsue the night before we play again. Just let me know when, she said. He's going to a damn good job once he gets the hang of it, Ishin remarked. From where they stood, they could see Ichigo laughing at some joke of Captain Kairaku's. During all the time she'd spent with Ishin since his return to Soul Society, Ichigo had only come up in conversation once. In an uncharacteristically awkward moment for him, he'd commented on how stupid Ichigo was for letting a catch like her get away, but assured her that he still had a brain and was glad to see her again. She'd known that he was trying to avoid dancing around a touchy subject by trampling over it, and had appreciated it for the effort it was. The awkwardness was gone this time. He will, she said, almost to herself. When she looked back at his shin, he was watching her, a faint but knowing smile growing on his face. He's lucky to have you to look out for him, he said. My son has a good heart, but no sense sometimes. If only he'd taken after his mother more. She held back her laughter. He'll be fine. I think so, he said. There's one thing I have to ask you, Rukia-chan, he said, face growing serious. It's very important. Yes? She tensed. Wait at least a year before giving me grandchildren, he said firmly. He certainly owes me them, but let him settle into the job first. Her jaw dropped. Kurosaka-san. Well, I better go extend my congratulations to the new captain. He trotted away. Been a while since I've given him a good kicking. Rukia decided she needed another drink. She found Renji on her way for more sake. Hey. She elbowed him. Having fun. It's not bad. He winked at her. Our division would do it better, but it's a passable party. 
it'll get a chance to prove it when you retire, Captain Funny Eyebrows, she said. Why don't you have a drink? You should enjoy yourself. I will, I will. Later, he said. I'm trying to pace myself. Ranjaku's taking the opportunity to indulge, and at least one of us should be able to walk upright at the end of the night. You could drink with her, you know. He shrugged noncommittally. She rolled her eyes. You're being stupid. No, I'm being private. It isn't as if anyone would care. We'll see, he said. I don't see you out there drinking with your boyfriend. She stared. How did you? Rinji looked embarrassed. You look happy, he replied. I figured you would be once you stopped being a moron. She stepped on his foot, but didn't put her full weight into it. I'm sure you know a lot about being a moron. Never denied that. He ruffled her hair affectionately, then pulled away before she could stomp hard. Maybe I'll find Ran after all. You could congratulate the guest of honor, she said. I might, he said. But I think we've also said what we need to say. He waved. Later, Rukia. The crowd around Ichigo hadn't receded at all by the time she'd found and finished a second drink. Rukia didn't mind, but she didn't feel like winding her way through it, either. It wasn't that she didn't want to talk to him, be near him, and it wasn't that she was particularly patient, she didn't want to wait. But she could, because soon, she wouldn't have to wait any longer. The party was nice. The food was superb. The drink was plentiful. Ichigo appreciated all of this and made a mental note to ask Hinamori, who he should write a thank you note to later. Even though he wasn't wild about being the center of attention, he had to admit he was enjoying everyone's well wishes. He just wished he could track down the one person he wanted to hear from the most. He'd spotted Rukia once or twice, but not close enough to get her attention. For whatever reason, she'd decided to keep her distance. He supposed he could understand why, if he had her by his side, he wouldn't want to pay attention to anyone else that was there, and that'd just be rude. It didn't make her absence any less annoying, though. It was after midnight by the time he managed to escape from the crowd without getting pulled aside for another handshake and hearty congratulations. Things had mellowed out enough that it was more like a regular party than a formal occasion to honor the new captain. He was sure the constantly replenished alcohol had something to do with that. Now he just had to find Rukia. He began circling the edge of the courtyard, scanning the crowd for a glimpse of her, but he saw nothing. She just had to be tiny, didn't she? He could try feeling for Hareyatsu, but with this many strong spiritual presences around, it'd be like digging through sand to find more sand. Ichigo. He stopped in his tracks, close to one of the smaller buildings that bordered the yard. Rukia, he replied uncertainly. Ichigo, he heard again. Over here. Turn around. Look up, you idiot. He turned, looked and squinted into the darkness. What are you doing on the roof? What are you doing on the ground? she retorted. Good question. In a quick flash step, he was on the roof. He plopped down beside her. She handed him a hunk of taiyaki, and they chewed in silence. So, Captain, she said after a few minutes. Congratulations. Thank you, he said, then, when she didn't follow up, that's all. Should I say something else? He shrugged. Been hearing that all evening. Thought you might at least come up with something more original. I suppose I should have had time to think of something more since I waited so long for the captain to free up. He frowned, but she was smiling when he glanced at her, so he relaxed. Don't worry, Rukia. If you try really hard, I'm sure you'll be as popular someday, he said. He hesitated for a moment. Where's Renji? I'm sure he would have kept you company. He left with Matsumoto a while ago, she said. Ichigo blinked. Matsumoto. I didn't realize they were friends. 
Well, they should be. Rukia chuckled. They are sleeping together. He whipped around to stare at her so fast he could practically feel himself get whiplash. Renji and Matsumoto. You're kidding me. Because I'm such a joker. She made a face. Huh? He leaned back on his hands. He said something that made me think he was seeing someone, but I didn't figure it was her. Neither did anyone else, she said. He didn't even tell me until I went to have breakfast with him one morning and caught them in bed. Why is it such a secret? He's an idiot, she said. He keeps insisting it's just friends with benefits, as he puts it, but I'm not so sure. It's not a subject we've discussed in depth, though. I guess not. Did you see your father? she asked. Oh, Pops. Yeah, we talked for a while. I think he and Kairaku are up to something now. I didn't really want to know. She grimaced. As old as those two are, I don't think they've ever truly grown up. You're telling me. He snorted. I'm the one he raised, don't forget. I don't think I could. They were quiet for a few minutes. Though the actual distance wasn't great, the noises of the party seemed muffled and almost far away. Ichigo. Rukia, they started almost at the some moment, then stopped. She smirked and he ducked his head, feeling stupid. Go ahead. Um, I'm not really sure what I was going to say. He edged closer. Sorry we haven't gotten a chance to talk in a few days. It's been crazy getting ready for this. Don't be sorry. She waved a hand dismissively. I understand. It's probably about time we did, though. I suppose so, she said quietly. He watched her, trying to figure out how to say what had been on his mind. It would be nice if he could just take her in his arms, kiss her, and let that say it all, but things had never been that simple with them. I've been thinking a lot this week, he said, staring at his hands. About us. Where we were, where we are, where the hell we go from here. She just nodded. He couldn't quite read her, her expression seemed welcoming enough, but slightly guarded, like she was waiting for him to reveal his hand before she showed hers. I'm not one for speeches, Rukia, he said. So I don't know how well this is gonna come out. He took a breath. You and me, we are not meant to be. Rukia made a soft noise in the back of her throat and immediately he saw where he'd gone wrong. Hold on. He grabbed her hand. When I say we are not meant to be, I mean, we are not fated, Rukia. It wasn't inevitable that I'd die and we'd get back together. It was our choice. He took a breath. It still is. I want to be with you. Yeah, we fucked things up a lot before. Doesn't mean we have to now. I want to try, he said. So, your turn. After a moment, she took his face in her hands and kissed him hard. He pulled her closer, and for several minutes there was nothing beyond the warmth of her in his arms. Until she pulled back and pinched his side. Ow, he protested. What the hell was that for? You're right, Ichigo, she said. You are terrible with words. She leaned in so their foreheads touched. But I think I can live with that. Good. He snuck in another quick kiss. So, wanna start living with it tomorrow night, then? Say, around eight. Kurosaki Ichigo, are you asking me on a date? Maybe, he said. She laughed. Hey, it seemed as good an idea as any. We never really did that, you know. I know, she said. I accept. Well, good. He stood. Captain's Haru blowing in the light breeze. The wind had kicked up a bit. I've got my own captain's quarters now, he said, grinning. Wanna check them out? Break em in a bit. She snorted, and he knew he didn't fool. Her for a second. Which was fine, he wasn't really trying. I suppose we might as well. He held out a hand to help her up, 
but she shook her head and hopped to her feet. Race you, she said. She disappeared in a blur of Shurinpa, only to reappear on top of the next building. Ichigo. Are you coming or not? I'm coming, I'm coming. He grinned. Let's go. Like and subscribe.